How do you record a full orchestra in the middle of a pandemic? That's what I'm here to talk about with Edwin Outwater here at the San Francisco Conservatory's Music's new Bose Center um, in the Barbara Osher Recital Hall uh, overlooking City Hall. What was it, about a year ago we went to Chicago in the middle of a blizzard? A little more than, it was really cold. Yeah, yeah, we had plans to record it like March of 2020, Yeah, which uh, didn't work out for obvious reasons. Um, and this piece is a soundtrack to a film about the making of the orchestra. And so we needed to record it in a way that would allow us to sync up with the film. So it involves a click track. So there are a lot of different complicated elements to this before we even got into COVID. Um, when we started talking about recording in February of 21, had you ever recorded anything split up like this? Never. I think it's a, it's in film, it's a very, it's a somewhat common practice to do it this way, especially nowadays. They call it striping, uh, I learned. And so it's not unusual and it made total sense to do it this way, considering that COVID was going on and we couldn't have that many people on stage. And it presented actually some good opportunities for us yeah. doing it this way. And in many ways, it sounds really cool because we did it this way, but maybe yeah. you know how you feel about that. Well, I was concerned because I've never recorded an orchestra in five parts. Basically, we did low strings, high strings, woodwinds, brass, percussion. And I was concerned that we wouldn't achieve the kind of rich blend and big sound that Philharmonia Fantastique has in so many parts. Obviously, it's, this piece is about the orchestra as this amazing medium, and I want to make sure that the soundtrack uh, reflects that. There were a couple things that we had working for us. One. Um, was the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Unlike most orchestras that have done this approach of striping, um, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra is not uh, a studio orchestra with you know subs coming in left and right in LA. Um, this is a real orchestra where they know how to play together um, because they've been living with each other for, for years, even, even decades. So that was one thing I think that, that made it possible for it to sound so good as each subsequent section was playing with headphones, hearing the previous day's recording, they could blend and adapt to their colleagues in a way that I think like a, a, a film orchestra made up of kind of, uh, you know, freelancers, freelancers yeah. might not be able to do it. Um, and then of course there's Sean Murphy. We've got to talk about Sean Murphy, right? Um, mm -hmm. Sean Murphy is the recording engineer of this piece and he's John Williams recording engineer. He's the person that records like Jurassic Park or um, all the, the big scores that you've heard. Um, I mean, you knew him, right? You yeah, we'd worked together. Um, I'd been in the studio on some John Williams projects, assisting John, and got to meet Sean that way. And I knew that when he was involved, it would be fine. Um, and I think the fun thing about recording it this way, and kind of my job was, because the orchestra was separated, was to keep the energy of a live performance in that, in each take, if the strings were playing, and so, knowing that Sean was there and then knowing that I knew the whole piece in my head and could try to kind of get get it going. Um, and we have a long relationship also, the Chicago Symphony, almost 20 year relationship by this point. So there's a lot of trust and familiarity even in this unusual situation. Um, and I thought in one way it was an advantage because when the strings are alone, they just hear each other. And so there's this kind of intense precision and, and focus in each individual section uh, that is easier to achieve when it's just them sitting there alone. Right. You know, so yeah. the individual parts, if you have a mixer like Sean, bringing these intensely recorded individual parts into a whole, it's, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, and there, there's actually an element to the, the piece that um, was brought out by this recording technique. Um, you know, the piece has a kind of thematic of unity from diversity. There's this business of the different families, the orchestra, the instrument families, having to unify, overcome their differences, they have to kind of play each other's themes, speak each other's tongues. That's a big part of the piece building to the climax. And in a way, assembling the piece this way, it kind of dramatized that. And what it allowed us to do was to get a lot of control in, in the mixing room. Let's say you're gonna go um, up close to the flute because there's a segment in the film where the sprite, our main character, flies inside the flute. Well, we have much more control now that we're recording everybody individually that, than we would have if we did it all in one giant take. And we also were able to really, like, like you mentioned with the strings, really fine tune things in a way that, that you, you just don't have time for generally when you're, when you're recording in full orchestra. 
I think this business of climaxes was was like on my mind because there are things that happen in an orchestral tutti where people play to like the edge of their sound and get a kind of rawness, you know, think of climaxes of Tchaikovsky symphonies or whatever when they just play so loud. That was the primary concern. How did you like, how did, I mean, you, you got the sound, you did yeah. it. How did you get it out of it? I, I mean, you just have to tell them. <laughs> It's like, hey guys, this is a big climax in piece, like max it out here. And they did it, you know? And when you know, let them know what's really important, what these big moments are, they brought that extra, like from 100 to 110%. That was so thrilling. Yeah. And so that was my job ultimately, was to inflect, tell them what, what the big moments were and, and also to shape everything and to make sure phrases were consistent, articulations were consistent. Yeah. And it was actually a lot of work, but it's something, the more complex the problem is, the more fun I have. So I, I love I love the level of detail that I was working at with this with this project. Yeah, and, and what was what was interesting, and some some film geeks might want to know this, um, there were some things that we had to adjust in the film um, to match what we did in the studio. Um, there were certain like articulation changes that, for example, um, made us have to slightly recut elements of the film. Um, even though we were on a click track, you know, there's certain things that happen when you're recording and we wanted to, to, to keep those, um, those elements in the piece. So that was pretty fascinating, like as we were putting it all together later to go, okay, we did this a little bit differently here. How do we, how do we figure this out in the film? It would be things like, um, I think when there's the Simon Says moment, mm -hmm. for example, when the... Did screen, a little crescendo. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, we had these little things and you kind of made it a little, little bit more... We ended up just putting this in the score later. Oh, cool. Um, a yeah. Tenuto and a crescendo there. Yeah, I mean, the, um, I, I think the, the, the big emotional piece was that none of us had really done any work with an orchestra um, much of the year preceding. And when we got together in February of 2021 in Chicago, I mean, if you can think back to where we were with them, it was a pretty dark period. It was just like, almost like tears to your eyes, you know, coming together with people who were saying things like, we're really nervous, we haven't played together for a yeah. while. And that, that kind of made me feel a little better because I was like, well shit, I haven't gotten on an airplane before. Yeah, it was, it, it was, it was um, amazing to see everyone hugging each other, you know, in the woodwind section and saying, oh, I'm not gonna see you for another month. And there was a great deal of emotion among the players of the CSO being back together and doing something this important and, and major, it's a major recording project. So um, it, was, it was an amazing week. Uh, and it was an adventure every step of the way. And when I heard the final product, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I mean, you, there are a lot of great recordings of the Chicago Symphony done in the acoustic, you know, in these different venues in which they record have, and have recorded over the years. Um, and then there's been some film score work like the soundtrack to Lincoln. Um, this, I don't think they've ever recorded like this. And so it kind of takes an orchestra that has a reputation for being sonically spectacular and turns it up to 11 on top of that. So I think for like the sound nerds and the orchestra nerds and the, you know, sonic, people who love just sonic splendor, um, this is like the recording for you. Yeah, and, and, and part of that is, um, we have Sean, of course, but our director, Gary Rydstrom, um, he's directed, you know, feature animations, but he's, he's noted for his work in sound design. He's won seven Oscars for that. And so not only do we have Sean Murphy recording, but we have Gary Rydstrom, who has some of the best ears on the planet, um, doing another pass at it. And so, yeah, I, I would venture to say it's it's one of the best sounding orchestral recordings because of the way we were forced to record and because of the people that were on it. Yep. So take a listen. It's good. <laughs> 